Hey guys, and welcome to this video on the cycle function from the ITER tools module. This is the first video back after Christmas, so I hope you all, you've all you all had a good chance to rest and have a good time, whatever you guys have been doing. Uh, now, this one is particularly interesting. It's one that I, um, I've used in practice quite a number of times over the past few months. So uh, I want to show a really quick kind of toy example and then go into a, uh, a, a more real life uh, kind of real world example. So what it does, effectively, it goes over a sequence, yielding items, and then once it's finished giving you all those items, basically starts all over again. So I suppose you had some sequence. There we are, 10, 20, 30. So traditionally, if you you know if you wanted to make this into a generator, you it would yield 10, 20, 30. That generator then becomes exhausted. So yeah, it crashes here and doesn't let you do anything else. You get a stop iteration error. However, with cycle, what we can basically do is say, give me 10, 20, 30. And rather than kind of erring out here, it just says, okay, back to the start I go. And I'll keep going and keep going. And that's it really. So it's a pretty neat way of saying like, you know, if you've got a list of things, a dictionary or a tuple or a string or whatever, and you want to say, okay, for each item, I want to do something and just keep, just keep that going forever and ever and ever. So the example I'm going to show in just a minute is I've got a couple of URLs and I want to use the request module to basically do a get request to each URL and just keep it going forever. So I'll show you a toy example first and then we'll jump straight into that one. So for our toy example, we'll keep it really quick because I think the, uh, the real life example is a lot more interesting. Uh, but just to give you the basic gist of what's happening, set up a simple list containing 10, 20, 30 uh, and then we set up a new variable um, let's call a CYC, short for cycle. Uh, you can see I've imported cycle from ITER tools here. Um, because I'm just using cycle, I can do from ITER tools, import cycle. But of course, if you're using you know, multiple things, you could just do import ITER tools and then do ITER tools dot cycle. Uh, just got cycle here, so it's, it's fine to do it this way. Okay, and we can see it takes in some iterable. So something like a list, string, uh, dictionary, something like that would work. And we can see it's kind of mirrors what I put up here, to be honest. Return elements from the iterable until it's exhausted, then repeat the sequence indefinitely. So I'm going to pass in LST here. And then once we're done, I'm going to print off CYC, cycle, and let's hit run. And we get this cycle object here. Uh, what I do want to do, actually, is run this into the dir function. I want to see what attributes and methods are available to me here. Now, the ones I'm interested in is this guy, next. I'm also interested in iter as well. So uh, let's start with next. The fact that it has next means I can use the next function uh, over this item. So if I was to do print next of cyc, um, temporarily blank this out. So if I do next a couple of times, we can see this acting a bit like a generator. So let me clear the screen. Right, so see every, each time we call next, we're yielding an item from this. So where you would traditionally expect this to fail here, right? If this was a normal generator, this bit would be like bad. No, you, you can't have me because, you know, this these first three exhausted these. So let's try the fourth. There we go, 10, 20, 30, 10. Pretty cool, right? Uh, what we can even do, let's get rid of all of these. Uh, we'll keep one. And if I was to do for underscore in the range of 10, so for 10 things, yield something. We'll clear this and we'll run again. And there we go, see that? 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, so on and so forth. Um, so that's one way of iterating over it. We can have some kind of a mechanism so we can do a for loop. Um, maybe we could even do a while loop here as well. So if you want to do something indefinitely, uh, this will look a bit messy, but this is perfectly valid and would also work. So you could do that and that would just keep on going. Uh, this is actually something I have done before a couple of times, uh, especially if we import time up here, uh, we could ask for an item and then use the time module to maybe sleep for a second. So if you're making API calls, obviously you don't want to go crazy and do them all the time. So you could do that, and basically that'll just keep going forever. 
uh, until, I don't know, your computer breaks or whatever, but yeah, we're yielding an item, sleep for a second, as soon as we yield the 30, we come right back to the start and off we go again. Well, yeah, pretty nice way of doing it. You can also iterate it over it directly, and that is because, let me bring this back for just a second, you'll notice it has, uh, where is it? There it is. It has this iter, which means that this is also iterable. So you could, if you want to do, you could do for i in CYC, um, print i here. You know what, uh, because this is gonna go nuts. Uh, let's sleep for half a second uh, in between each one, shall we? So we can also iterate over the cycle object directly. And let's kill that there. That's our toy example done. So just to reiterate, we pass in some kind of iterable to the cycle function. We can iterate over that cycle item directly. Uh, we can use the next function each time to get an item out. Uh, of course, you can use a for loop, you can use a while loop, any kind of mechanism up here to, you know, to make some kind of loop happen. Uh, so let's, um, let's clear the screen and I want to jump into a more real life uh, and practical example of how we can use this. Alrighty, so I've got a dictionary containing these three uh, keys, Liverpool, London and Inverness. Uh, these are three cities and what I've got as the value for each one is basically a URL. So I take this guy here for a second. Uh, actually, that's really bad. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to call this URL and give this some actual nice variable names. Uh, and what this API does, it basically lets you, um, you basically go to this website here and you can pass in a number of different uh, parameters. So we give it the Latin long for these cities here uh, and then we, we can request certain bits of data out. Uh, and what we can do is we can use the request module to basically make a get request to this. This returns a JSON object and then from that JSON object, we can then pass out the bits you want. So I put this here just so I can mem well, memorize the keys. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do import requests. Uh, there's RQ for a bit of readability here. Uh, just just want to bear in mind this uh, this does require pip. This is built in. This is not. So make sure you've got this pip installed, uh, just so you can use the request module. And, and let's do response is equal to RQ dot get of URL. Won't go too much into the mechanics of how this request um, works. So obviously, I'm only trying to focus on the cycle. Um, what we'll do, not down there, up here, is we will print response. Uh, we should get a 200 if this is all good. Lovely. Uh, now, because this, uh, this is returning JSON, what we can do is do dot JSON here like this, and this will convert the response into its JSON form, just basically a dictionary. And there we go. Uh, and what I can then do, I can take this first key. Uh, this response has many keys, so if I take hourly, this gives me this data here, and then from that, I can then access uh, this temperature 2M, which is some, some temperature data going into the future here. If I just quickly hit run, there we go, we get a list. So this is basically the, the temperature data, or the upcoming temperature data, for this location here. Now, suppose I want to find the average for this. We could do a really quick function. Let me bring this down just a second. Let's do average like this. Uh, we'll do data, which is a list. And this is gonna return a float. And then we will just do return the sum of data divided by the len of data like this. It's just a dead basic function to do this here. Uh, if I do response comma average of response so what i should see now i should see the all the data pop in uh, followed by the average at the end there he is 6.7 um maybe we want to round this so if i do round we can actually do i do round comma two and do this to two places just do maybe we go Bit more granular. Okay, yeah, um, I'll do four. But yeah, make this whatever you want, and that's that's totally fine. Um, so back to cycle. Suppose I was writing an application, and I want to say, go to each of these places and constantly spit out the average forecasted temperature for these. Uh, maybe those could then be emailed. They could be saved to file. They could be sent via text, whatever you want. But we want to do this. Uh, you know, maybe every 30 seconds we'll go through 
each of these and just keep going. So I want to see Liverpool, London, Inverness, keep going, and I want constant reporting on all three. We could use cycle to do this. So we can make a cycle object out of these and constantly yield Liverpool, London, Inverness, and the relevant values here. So let's set this up. To begin with, I'm gonna actually just get rid of the print statement here for just a second. And I wanna comment out this because this is going off and making a request. Uh, so let's take average, make this a bit cleaner, shall we? I'm going to get rid of this and put this up here. I'll leave a gap under cities and I'll actually remove this temporarily because I've got that down here. So what I can do, uh, let's just do cities underscore cycle is equal to the cycle function with cities passed in. Now this has an interesting side effect when you give it a dictionary. Um, just like if you iterate over a dictionary, you only get the keys. So um, let me just quickly show you what this looks like. If I do next of cities cycle, you will should see when I clear the screen that we just get Liverpool. However, if I do dot items here, this basically returns like a, it's like a list of tuples. Uh, each tuple contains the key and the value. So if I say now do this, we get this tuple containing Liverpool and this here. And cool thing is because this tuple returns two items, we can use sequence unpacking. So if I do city URL is equal to next of city cycle. Now, of course, this is bec only because this returns two things. Uh, if this does like well, less than or more than two, it's gonna break. This only works because you have key value, key value, key value. Hit run and yeah, it didn't break, but maybe I should probably print it, right? Um, I'll just do this to kind of split it up and then do URL at the end here. And we can see that this gives me my city up front, my URL at the back here, which is pretty cool. So what we could do now is effectively set up our loop and then we can then do this, but pass the URL of each city in here instead. So we'll get this removed. And then what I'll do, I'm going to do for underscore in range, um, let's do, we'll do eight, do eight to begin with here. Pass this like this. And what I can then do is bring response inside here as well. So let's just let's pause for a second to figure this out. For eight times, basically give me uh, one of these items. So the first thing is gonna be city is Liverpool. The URL is gonna be equal to this guy here. This is then going to go off to that URL and fetch me um, fetch me the list with the containing the temperature, and then we can just make a little F string. So we can do um, uh, average temp for blank. Um, let's do, and then we'll do another one here like this. And then all you need to do is populate city, and then inside this one here, I'm going to go to my function average average of not your own response here all right i think that looks good hopefully there's no errors in here and we're going to hit run and there we go let's bring this up a little bit so check that out liverpool london inverness and then liverpool london inverness and that's it what you could even do is you know you could do this in a bigger loop you could put some kind of breaks in here uh do we have time imported no we do not uh, let's import time Maybe you want to put a little pause on, so maybe um, to avoid kind of hammering the API. Well, actually, I believe this one gives you something like 10,000 requests a day, and it's free, which is pretty nice. Uh, we could do a two second sleep like this. So now if we hit clear, you should see this kind of go through and pause this time. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, so, and I think in practice, this is something I, I've actually used a fair amount of times. So just to kind of reiterate and end off the video here, because um, I guess the, with these things, it's all, it's all well and good doing like, like a toy example, but this only becomes really useful when you figure out how to actually integrate this into your code. So when would you use this? So if we want to basically constantly uh, iterate over a, a sequence and do something with each item. The key here really is this constantly. You know, if you just, if you're just kind of going iterate over a sequence and do something with each item, that's a for loop, right? It's the constantly bit. If you want to kind of go through, you know, again and again and again, so whether it's 
a list of emails to send through, you know, send stuff to, a list of numbers to ping, a list of IP addresses to ping, a list of URLs to go and process, a list of files to constantly open. The opportunities for this really are pretty endless. And of course, if you're kind of that beginner intermediate level in Python, with this being a really kind of powerful tool built in, it's definitely worth learning. You never know when this kind of tool might come in pretty handy. Uh, I've certainly used this an awful lot of times and it's proven itself to be pretty useful to my uh, to my kind of daily work and practice. Um, but yeah, cheers for watching guys and hopefully see you all in the next video. Thanks.